Hello guys, welcome back to Did It Survive, where I'm taking the first 36 enemies from the original Legend of Zelda to see if they made it out of the game, and if so, how they evolved over the years. The last two videos we covered Armos, Lynels, Rope, Zora Enemy, Goria, Keese, Dig Dogger, Stone Statues, Pea Hats, Patra, and Wish Robes, making that 11 out of the 36 total enemies elaborated on. Along with the 20 main games in the series, I'll be adding in Cadence of Hyrule due to the extensive list of enemies from throughout the series. If you're interested in seeing any of these guys' transformations over the years, I'll link the playlist right here. With that, let's head into today's enemies. This first enemy should be pretty familiar to you regardless if you're a new player or an older player. This is Goma. The red Goma is the boss in level 6 and a mini boss in level 8 in the first quest. The second quest, however, a red Goma appears as an enemy throughout level 5 and a mini boss in level 7, with the appearance from a tougher blue version as a boss in level 6. Both versions are protected by its hard shell cover only allowing damage to come from an arrow strike to the eye. The red Goma is a single shot to the eye where the blue Goma takes 3 hits. This might sound like an easy defeat, but they also shoot beams at you as a self-defense measure, costing you one heart if you get hit by a beam, as well as if they make contact with you. Gomas have changed a lot over the years from their appearance to how their battles themselves are fought, even adding in some of their spawn to Ocarina of Time, Oracle of Seasons, Cadence of Hyrule, and Twilight Princess. In total, they've been in 8 games in the franchise including The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Oracle of Seasons, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventures, Twilight Princess, and Tears of the Kingdom. Most of these guys are simply named Goma, but Armo Goma from Twilight Princess and Marble Goma from Tears of the Kingdom. My favorite Goma to fight still has to be the one from Twilight Princess. I love the fact that you have to control the statues and swing their hammer for hits on the boss, only ever having to swing your sword one time in the whole fight. Kind of like the original battle, only having to hit one arrow to secure the fight. I think overall, Goma has been pretty active over the years with rather little change in its total character, still holding a place in our hearts as potentially the first boss we ever played in the series. This next guy is honestly one of my favorite enemies in the series. This would be Bubble. Originally, Bubbles were found in dungeons. In the first quest, if you touched one, you would lose the ability to swing your sword for a few seconds. However, in the second quest, they introduced red and blue bubbles along with the standard ones. If Link touches a red bubble, he couldn't swing a sword again without the intervention of a blue bubble's touch, visiting a fairy fountain, drinking a potion, or grabbing a Triforce piece at the end of a level. These bubbles didn't actually take any hearts, just your ability to use your weapon. Bubbles would eventually split into two categories. Floating skulls are something called anti-fairies. Floating skulls are exactly as they sound. They are large, levitating skulls usually accompanied by some sort of mist or fog with them. Where anti-fairies are little skulls with four orbs around them while they're bouncing all around the room like a DVD screensaver so they can hit you causing damage. Collectively, Bubbles have been in The Legend of Zelda, Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, The Wind Waker, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, Twilight Princess, Spirit Tracks, Phantom Hourglass, A Link Between Worlds, and Cadence of Hyrule. All of these enemy styles are pretty neat, from the big bobbleheads in Ocarina of Time to the little guys in A Link to the Past. Truly a fun enemy always to lighten up a dungeon or to make you want to light the dungeon on fire. Overall, these guys really haven't changed too much over the years other than the very obvious split, but I think they've stuck around a considerable amount being in 15 of the games making it a pretty predominant enemy in the series. Our next enemy is a pretty cute little guy named Paul's Voice. These bunny lookalikes are actually a type of ghost. They were found bouncing around in dungeons and if they landed on top of you, they would take two hearts. Luckily, they have two weaknesses. You can one-shot them with an arrow, or if you happen to have a system that has a microphone, you can just yell at them and they'll all be defeated in the frame, including the Famicom's second controller, 3DS, and Wii U. But there are different ways on the remaining consoles as well. The Game Boy Advance by hitting the select button four times, the Wii moving the right control stick of the classic controller, also rolling the C stick of the GameCube controller offers the same effect along with combination trigger clicks on the Switch. Alternatively, the recorder or instruments in general do not have any effect on these guys in any game. Paul's voice appears in The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, and Phantom Hourglass. I like these guys from Phantom Hourglass and the Temple of Courage. They look way closer to the manual art from the original, showing their huge mouth harboring massive amounts of teeth, making them seem more ghost-like hovering rather than jumping all over. However, sadly, they haven't really been in too many games, but I would like to see them revived in an upcoming game. These next guys should probably be a fan favorite by now. They're Octoroks. They're found mostly in the overworld, crawling around shooting rocks in a straight line closest to Link. Using a shield, Link can also deflect the rocks, making it so no damage is taken by the attack. Octoroks come in two colors in the original, red and blue. With their attack power being the same with half a heart taken with contact or a rock hit, the red Octoroks health is one where the blue's health is two. 
Later on in the series, there is a common characteristic between the playing styles. In the 2D games, Octoroks are seen crawling around on the land, where the 3D games, they've changed into a whack-a-mole type enemy popping out of the water or the ground whenever Link wanders too close to them. They also have evolved into some extra enemies and bosses. Winged Octoroks, Octomines, Golden Octoroks, Big Octos, and the standard size Octorok in the Minish Cap as a boss for Minish Size Link. Along with those adaptations, the original style appear in The Legend of Zelda, Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Four Swords, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, Skyward Sword, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, Cadence of Hyrule, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. That's quite a lot of games to get acquainted with the Octoroks. Do you have any entertaining memories of them? I have two that stand out to me. The first time I played the original, this frame right here absolutely terrified me. I wasn't prepared for all these guys to be hanging out together. Also, Majora's Mask, this guy just chilling in the tunnel. I don't know if it's just because this game stresses me out, or if this guy was just comically large, but I had a good laugh and it made the next trade sequence with the witches go by so much faster. I can say pretty confidently these guys have held up through the series. They're in all of the main titles except Twilight Princess, which is pretty crazy. This next guy is a spooky fellow often confused with other ghosts and ghouls in the franchise. This enemy's name is Guinea. Appearing only in graveyards on the map, one guinea loads into the frame with you, however if you touch a gravestone, more will spawn in. The first guinea is there when the screen loads in, and it has 11 hearts, and can be attacked clearing all the other guineas on the screen after the defeat. But the guys that spawn in from the tombstones are completely invincible to any and all attacks except killing the first guinea, but both styles deal a full heart of damage with each touch. You can tell them apart by how they move. The original placements float slowly around the tombstones, where the new ones are more erratic in their movements. Sadly, guineas are mistaken for pose in the newer games due to them both having cemeteries as their primary living quarters. Guineas are distinctive and easy to pick out. They have one eye and have their tongues out constantly. If anything, they should be confused with King Boo from the Super Mario franchise. Getting back on track here, guineas have appeared in The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, The Menish Cap, Triforce Heroes, and A Link Between Worlds. In Link's Awakening, Oracle of Ages, and Four Swords, they're found as giant guinea bosses, as well as having some other appearances like Light Guinea and Dark Guinea. I would like to think these guys are honestly one of the hardest enemies in the whole first Legend of Zelda. It can be like a ping pong game of death with all them bouncing around you. I don't know if Guinea could actually work in the newer games. Due to their style of gameplay paired with the fact that the games that they appear in are either 2D or top-down angled, but if they did make it into a new game, it would be one hell of a fight with the room being filled with completely undefeatable enemies except one single Guinea. Could you imagine? Last but definitely not least are some of what I think are the cooler enemies from the original. Leavers. They were found in the overworld popping up from under the sand spinning around trying to attack you. They came in two colors like most of the Legend of Zelda enemies. The red lever had 2 health, with the attack power of half a heart and damage, where the blue lever had 4 health and dealt a whole heart with an attack. Over the years they have stayed native to sandy areas, and for the most part still look pretty much like the original, but they slowly started looking more like a plant eventually turning into a full cactus lookalike. These guys appear in The Legend of Zelda, Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, and Cadence of Hyrule. I absolutely love the style of these guys from Twilight Princess. The enemies in that game fall so well with the ambience of that game, plus I like the fact that they look like small little desert plants. I like to think for the most part these guys have stuck around. They might not be in the newer games, but most of the older players can spot them a mile away in the games that they do appear in. I hope you guys like the new installment of this series. With the expansion of these guys, it's now 17 out of the 36 enemies from the original Legend of Zelda. Feel free to leave any questions or memories of any of these enemies talked about today. I'll leave the playlist for the series here and the first video linked at the end if you're interested in watching the first 11 enemies in the series. Make sure to share this video with a fellow Zelda fan and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. Also, make sure to turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on a new post if you're interested in the series. With that, remember to drink some water and be safe. I'll see you guys next time.